Brexit campaigner's original plan, get a steam engine, call it the Brexit Express. And this weekend, with Britain having left the EU, drive it across the country in triumph. Brexiteer MP Steve Baker tweeted this video today. Sometimes metaphors come at you like a train. London's Remainer mayor, Sadiq Khan, on the other hand, went for a bus. If you're an EU citizen living in the UK, you will need to apply to the EU Settlement Scheme. The government settlement scheme for EU citizens who want to stay in Britain post-Brexit went live this weekend. Along with a consortium of charities and law firms, advice sessions on how to apply for the scheme were available on board. Isabel Moura is Portuguese. She spoke to us after her advice session. <laughs> how long have you been here yourself? 21 years. Oh, wow. That's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. She took a few minutes and then asked to be interviewed again. It's not just about applying for a piece of paper or, or a settled status. It's, it's bigger than that. It's the way now I feel that maybe I shouldn't be here because they, because I was made feel like that. I've been called a skew jumper. I've been called a, I don't know, so many citizen of nowhere. I don't know how many things we've been called. that It, it kind of gets in you and you feel like a bit segregated in a way. One of the lawyers on board explained the deadline options and the worst case scenario. If we crash out of the European Union, people need to apply by December 2020. Um, and if we have a transitional agreement, they need to apply by June 2021. After that, they become overstayers. Um, so that means they become illegal immigrants. Yeah, what is the worst possible case scenario at that point? Well, it's just that we have maybe over a million or more than that EU nationals who aren't aren't registered under the scheme and haven't applied for status or haven't heard to apply for status um, and therefore now become long-term overstayers and you get a similar situation to the Windrush generation. The Immigration Minister Caroline Noakes addressed this point directly today though and said that nine million pounds would be given to charities to help vulnerable people in particular access the scheme on time. Next stop for the bus, Leytonstone in East London. Destination Brexit, who knows. Tomorrow Parliament will hold an indicative vote on Brexit alternatives. Today the Justice Minister said that Theresa May couldn't ignore MPs if they voted for a soft Brexit option. We're in an environment where it's not about going for just going for your first choice. Sometimes you do have to accept your second or third choice in order to avoid an outcome that you consider to be even worse. And MPs are entitled to use their judgment as to what the real choices are available for us as a country and come to what they consider to be the best conclusion. All eyes then on the Commons tomorrow, where MPs try again to take control of the Brexit Express. Well, a short while ago, I spoke to the Shadow Immigration Minister, Afsal Khan, who was previously a member of the European Parliament and a Greater Manchester police officer. I asked him why he was worried about the EU resettlement policy. You've got this about three and a half million people, which will double uh, the workload on the Home Office and the time scale they have as well. And the way they're trying to reach out as well, there's bound to be people who will be missed out, people who won't even find out uh, the outreach work they'll do as well. And even if it's a small percentage, putting it together, that would be huge. And we've already seen, you know, the whole uh, hostile environment, the impact it has, the wind rush. Can I move you on to another topic, uh, which is our main news today, which is that of knife crime and the changes in stop and search. You're a former police officer yourself. Um, yes. So I, I just wonder, you know, what, what do you think about the idea of making stop and search without uh, reasonable suspicion easier? We must learn from the past as well. What you don't want to do is sort of knee-jerk reaction, trying to deal with this issue, and then you go back to square one, the difficulties that we've been facing. So it's getting that right is also important. Now, recently, I spent some time working with the police uh, and what sort of shocked me personally was the scale of cuts. Well, while EU citizens are trying to work out how to, to get settled status, 
uh, you and everybody else will face tomorrow another set of these indicative votes. How are you going to vote? Which ones are you going to approve yourself? Well, look, uh, I'll be looking at what the Labour Party has been asking for, in a sense, anything which keeps us close as possible to the EU, uh, at the same time uh, respecting the result of the Brexit. I'm a former MEP. I have seen the benefits of all that as well. So I think anything that protects our jobs, uh, the economy, and also gives us in the long term a better relationship is probably the way forward. I'll do what uh, I think is best for the country. Asal Khan, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, joining me now is the Conservative MP, Robert Halfen, Chair of Parliament's Education Select Committee and an advocate of a closer relationship with the EU than Theresa May's Brexit deal. His Common Market 2.0 plan, as it's called, was one of those rejected by MPs last week, but is likely to come back again tomorrow. Common Market 2.0 is basically being in the single market and the customs union. How is that Brexit? Well, first of all, it's not being in the customs union. It's actually a stronger Brexit because you're out of the fisheries policy, out of the farming policy, out of the European Court of Justice, out of political union, out of the home affairs and taxation. But you'd be in our new customs you would union. You would have a temporary customs arrangement until you solve the frictionless border, but members of EFTA are not members of permanent customs. But free unions. movement would continue? Yes. Uh, it, well, if you have a purist view about freedom of movement, yes. However, you have important breaks on freedom of movement. The articles in the European free trade area say you can have a unilateral right to stop freedom of movement if there are societal, economic or environmental pressures. So it you do take that last control. Week, though, didn't it, as an, as an option? Why, why is that going to be different tomorrow? 188 votes, first time of asking. Uh, Labour MPs were whipped against it. If that doesn't happen tomorrow, uh, we've got cross-party support. We've got um, support from uh, the Scottish National Party senior member, Stuart Hosey. So I think there is a very good chance, because it isn't just a stronger Brexit, it's a workers' Brexit, because you have access to the single market, you safeguard jobs and businesses, and you safeguard workers' rights as well. But it's also a unity Brexit because it's supported by Remainers. I was a moderate Remainer. And leavers such as George Eustace, who actually re resigned from the government because he didn't like the way the Prime Minister's deal was going. But Theresa May won't do it, will she? I mean, if it gets a majority tomorrow, she's not going to suddenly go, OK, we'll do that. Well, if Parliament decides and Com Market 2.0 gets a majority, I think it will be hard for the government to ignore. And it does have increasing amount of support from MPs across the House. As I say, it's a unity Brexit. It's been supported by Eurosceptics in the past. I mean, even people like Nigel Farage and other Eurosceptics... Isn't the trouble that sort of the leadership election about is now them. impending because she's got to go, uh, well, said she's going to go, um, is colouring everything? You know, I mean, this weekend is absurd. You know, we've had, you know, Dominic Raab writing about knife crime and Liz Truss doing interviews in the, in the you know, in, in, the, in the weekend papers and, and, and you know, even Sajid Javid's move on, on police stop and search powers. It's got to all be seen in the context of, I want to be Prime Minister, hasn't it? Well, it's inevitable that once the Prime Minister announced that she was going to step down, um, that all this, anything anybody does, it would be seen in the, t in the eyes of uh, uh, leadership. But to be fair, knife crime, as you pointed out, is, is a great social injustice of our time. It's gone up by something like a huge amount over the past f few years. And uh, Sajid Javid, the Home Secretary, has been working on this for some time, but it isn't just about stop and search. We've got to deal with the root causes, particularly looking at exclusions in our schools. We have something like 40 ex children excluded every day uh, from our schools, 4,000 children with special educational needs excluded every school week from our schools. And you know that there is a correlation, we know there is a correlation between those who uh, commit knife crime, who get involved in gangs, and those who are excluded from school. I mean, you're an old friend of Sajid Javid from university days, I think, aren't you? Um, uh, will you be backing him to take over? I, uh, Do you think he's the next Prime Minister? If Shazid does decide to stand, I will be supporting him, but not because I was friends with him at university. I didn't back him when he stood as deputy leader last time with Stephen Crabb. I'd back him because he's the social justice candidate. He's a candidate that can appeal across the metropolitan areas to constituencies like mine in Harlow. And I really believe he's a social justice Is uh, he candidate given his background. Do you agree with him on Brexit? I haven't discussed Brexit with him. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> Robert Helfer, thank, thank you very much indeed for joining us. <laughs>